Hello everyone. In the previous video, we considered how it helps to remember God while we are young. At least we considered one particular aspect of it and uh, uh, we realized how remembering God can help us in acquiring and sustaining a sense of purpose, which is a particular value when we are young. In the present video, we look at, at another aspect of the same discipline, namely remembering your Creator when you are young. Remembering God denotes or generates a state of higher awareness. Now, this is of particular importance for us to note. The worth, the greatness, and the future of a human being depends to a large extent on the extent and quality of his or her awareness. For example, uh, we look at the pig which is considered a despicable creature. What's the problem with the pig? Or what's the limitation of the pig? The pig is focused only on the immediate. It goes around digging its nose in the mud, searching for uh, whatever is the most useless, including human excreta. So, the pig is what it is because its awareness is so woefully, pathetically reduced to that immediate little spot where it expects to find something edible. So, it lacks awareness of the higher things. If you look at the evolution of human beings, uh, anthropologists tell us that there was a time when human beings also walked on all fours. At that time, our head was held not in this manner, but in this manner, horizontally. And therefore, the extent of our awareness was very grossly limited. When human beings were able to stand on two legs, they were able to hold their head upright and their range of vision and consequently the extent of their awareness increased. They were able to look at the sky, for example. And philosophers tell us that the birth of philosophy coincides with man's awareness of the heavens or man's ability to see the skies. It's that important. So, when the writer of Ecclesiastes says, remember your creator when you are young, what it means is, please cultivate and maintain a higher awareness of things. It's possible for us to contain or limit our awareness only to whatever exists on the horizontal plane of life. But there is another dimension to life, which is a vertical dimension. And that's the reason why we are able to stand upright in the first place. So, we should be able to incorporate the vertical dimension of reality into our movement along the horizontal axis of life. That capacity is given only to human beings. Animals do not have this capacity to lift their imagination to something higher. That's why they're animals. So the distinctive feature of a human being or human beings as a species is the ability to lift one's imagination above the horizontal plane, the given and the commonplace, and to imagine things far higher. So we are a very interesting uh, um, species in the sense that even as our feet are planted on the earth, our head is among the clouds. So we have this vertical dimension. And um, if we don't do justice to it, then we would end up wasting the glorious possibilities of our youth. Now, one particular issue when you're young, 
and I can say this because I've gone through that phase, is the power of temptations. The simple meaning of temptation is anything that deflects you from the pursuit of whatever is the core purpose of your life. Uh, for example, there is a tendency to, waste, tendency to waste time. People say, oh, come, let's go and hang out. Or there are young people who experience a bit of thrill. So they go and uh, tear through the streets. Some get involved in accidents, unfortunately. Speed thrills but kills, as the old dictum goes. Um, if you look at all of these, I've just mentioned two of uh, two, so two examples. If you look at all of this, that is hanging out and then speeding through streets, a sense of adventure, if you like, all these are horizontal activities. There is nothing vertical. There is no higher awareness. In fact, speed reduces awareness, and which has been scientifically proved. If you're driving a car, your awareness of the world around you at 40 kilometers per hour is far better and wider than your awareness at 60 kilometers per hour. And if you cross a 100 kilometers per hour, your awareness narrows down to that tubular vision. So all these things happen on the horizontal plane. Therefore, it is necessary to raise our imagination. Now, I was talking about temptations. Uh, there are two possibilities in temptations. Either you succumb to temptations or you triumph over temptations. When you succumb to temptations, you get degraded, your sense of self-worth gets eroded, and you acquire this tinge of regret which endures with you for a very long time, perhaps still the last day of your life. On the other hand, if you triumph over, if you overcome temptations, then you emerge that much stronger, clearer in your understanding, more confident, and better equipped for the adventure of life, the meaningful adventure of life. Now, let's take the example of Jesus facing and overcoming temptations. This particular passage is of great relevance to the youth. It is relevant to everyone, but the, uh, the relevance to the youth is particularly acute. And uh, therefore, I would recommend to young people to read that particular section, that is Ma the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, with great care, meditatively, look, trying to understand the deeper meanings recorded in that uh, event in our experience in the life of Jesus. Jesus was put to the test when he was at the zenith of his youth, when he was just 30 years of age. How did Jesus face these temptations? And how could he triumph over them? and emerge shining bright in the sphere, in the horizon of the spiritual destiny of humanity. If you look at the three temptations that Jesus faced, you'll see a common pattern. In each instance, Jesus was helped or he banged on a higher awareness. Satan tries to bring the awareness of Jesus down to the immediate, as in the case of the pig that I referred to earlier. For example, Jesus is hungry. Satan says, now order these stones to turn into bread, you eat. So the pattern here is trying to reduce the awareness of Jesus to that small little thing, hunger, my stomach. And in order to meet the cry of my stomach, I'll do anything. I'll violate the law of nature. Uh, there's no limit to uh, where and how far I go. Uh, so that's, that's a core temptation. So if you succumb to temptation, what happens? Your awareness gets reduced and reduced and reduced. In other words, you slowly fall from the level of the human and come, come down to the level of the animal. It's a very serious issue. So uh, in the second, second temptation, the same thing. Jesus' awareness is sought to be limited, reduced to that particular occasion the gain he might derive from it by creating a miracle or performing an impressive trick, as it were, of jumping from the top of the temple and then escaping from it unhurt, drawing applause from everyone, that would actually reduce the, 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 the spiritual awareness of Jesus. 
And Jesus was able to triumph over it because of the higher awareness. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. In the first, first instance, he said, man does not live by bread alone. What is the, what is the point there? While set, Satan is trying to reduce the awareness of Jesus to the immediate reality of one's hunger, which is important, Jesus counterpoints that by introducing a higher awareness. You can understand human being as a stomach. You can also understand human being as one imbued with cosmic possibilities. Man does, does not live by bread alone. The idea that man cannot live by bread alone comes only from that cosmic awareness. If you lack that, then you will think that Satan's temptation makes so much sense. It's foolish not to comply with it, not to succumb to that suggestion. This is the principle. So the moment Jesus triumphed over the temptation, his horizon of understanding became brighter. And he moves to a second temptation. And then again, Jesus is helped by the very, helped by the very same uh, 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 pattern, higher awareness. When Satan tries to focus Jesus' attention to the immediate, that is the purpose of gaining applause from people, Jesus counterpoints that with the awareness of God. Rather than pleasing human beings, let me honor God. Now, that is a tremendous force. Now, the third temptation, of course, uh, we, are, we, we are familiar with. Um, Satan leads Jesus to the top of the mountain, shows him the glories of the nations of the world, asks him to uh, bow down and worship him. There again, and that's a terrible temptation. You're getting the nations of the world on a platter, virtually for nothing. But Jesus is helped in that terrible temptation by this awareness of the grand purposes of God for him. Now, this is the power of expanding your awareness. And the best help to expand your awareness is suggested by the wisdom of this book, Ecclesiastes. Remember your Creator. Your creator has envisaged you and created you in a very special way. You're created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, you can't live like an animal. You cannot live entirely on the horizontal plane of life. There are great purposes concerning you. You may not be able to see it clearly now, but time will bring it to light. If you maintain yourself within the discipline that God has decided, if you take good care of yourself, if you won't waste yourself, and if you use God-given talents as the good and faithful servants did in the parable of the talents, and multiply them, then you reach a state of blessedness. But that possibility depends entirely on how aware you are of the higher authority, namely God, and with what sense of respect, love, and attachment you maintain that awareness. In the parable of the, parable of the talents, the wicked servant was aware of the master, but he was aware of the master in a negative and uh, grumbling, grudging sense. He imagined the master as a cold, cruel man, selfish man, wicked man, who would exploit the servant, uh, who would be very, very upset in case anything happened to the talent by way of, uh, in the process of uh, employing them. So he went and buried the talent. So the quality of life of this man, the wicked servant, whose attitude to his uh, master was negative, and the quality of life of the other two, but a positive attitude to the master who gave all the, ta uh, the talents to them, trusted the talents to them, is so dramatic, is so stark. And that's the point I'm making. And this is not a story, this is a reality of life. My dear friends, I wish I had the eloquence and the command of the language to communicate, communicate to you the decisive importance of this theme that I'm sharing with you. We need this higher awareness. And as I said, the right, said right at the outset of our thinking together, your stature, the quality of your being depends entirely on the extent of your awareness. 
Now, take education, for example. What's the purpose of education? One of the very popular thinkers on education, a South American thinker called uh, uh, Paul, no, what was his name? Paulo, Paulo Freire, uh, in his book titled The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Um, he said that the goal of education is the celebration of awareness. I would add a, one more word to it, the expansion and the steady expansion and uh, life-affirming celebration of awareness. Uh, and that is uh, an idea that I would endorse. So we need to grow inwardly in our total being, not just in our brain, and that growth is stimulated by this larger awareness. In nature, for example, a tree grows, a plant grows, sprouts a bud, the bud opens up, all because of the distant sun. Perhaps that's an analogy that we can keep in mind in understanding the practical value of what the writer of this text, uh, Ecclesiastes, says, remember your creator when you are young. It's very similar to the effect of the distant sun on the plant in nature. But for the sun, there would be no bud, no flower, and the plant itself would die out, the species would become extinct. Everything on, this, on, on planet Earth is made possible by the distant sun. Now, the sun is one of the created objects of the creator. The creator is far greater than all of this put together. Therefore, you can understand the great advantage in remembering the creator, our creator, when we are young. And um, young people who otherwise could lose their way into terrible things need nothing else than this one safeguard, a clear and strong awareness of the Creator all through their life. And add to what I've said today, what I, <coughs> what I said yesterday, read, read the two together. God awareness creates in us a very clear and powerful sense of purpose. <coughs> Secondly, it quickens in us a higher awareness, which is necessary to nourish and sustain our human richness, without which we'll sink to the level of animals. So, I fully endorse the wisdom of the book of Ecclesiastes. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> young people, sorry. <coughs> Sorry, young people, my beloved youth of India, remember your creator while you are young. There are more thoughts around this theme. More of that in the next unit. Thank you.